to solve a three by three system, one, because we can. <coughs> that one. And this one. Yeah. So, all right, the first thing I need to do is look at my system and convert it into an augmented matrix, right? Okay, so you all just did this. So I got 212 augmented by 10, 121 augmented by 8, and 31 negative 1 augmented by 2. Okay, now the deal with 3 by 3 is, is do not chase these around in some random order. Okay? Your goal at the end is hopefully to end up with, hopefully, hope for 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, augmented by stuff. Right? Because out of this I could read x is, y is, and z is. There are some cases which are slightly pathological in which this won't happen, like might not be possible. But let's hope for this. I am going to tell you that you need to target these in this order. This needs to be your first priority here. This zero. Your second priority needs to be this guy the bottom left. You will then use the bottom two rows to target your third priority here. After that, make the one. So fourth, fifth, and sixth priorities. And then go through and eliminate these guys. Or maybe do fourth priority here, get this one, and then make a one. Those are a little bit up for grabs. This one is definitely your fourth priority. These two I would advise for some of the time and not others. Okay. But this, that jazz, the first four are not up for grabs. Do those in that order. There are possible small breakdowns in that process, but... Is it like every time we do this, or is it just for this problem? No, every time you do this. So, for this problem, what's my first priority to get rid of? The one the middle one. Yeah. This thing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a one right now. Um, do I have a negative one that I could add to it somewhere? No. So I've got a 1 that I'm trying to target with either a 2 or a 3, right? That's inconvenient. So let me replace that middle row with something. So what are you going to do to the middle row to make it more convenient? Multiply by negative 2 or negative 3? Yes, pick negative 2 or negative 3. because I don't want to teach switching. <laughs> yeah, if you know about switching, go for it. So in this middle row, I'm going to multiply by negative 2. Sure. So negative 2, negative 4, negative 2, negative. So make sure you multiply the whole middle row by negative 2. What do you do with the first row and the third row? Same, same. Yeah, leave them exactly as they are. So 2, 1, 2, 10, and 3, 1, negative 1, 2. Okay, so that was row 2 gets turned into negative twice row 2. You guys see that thought? Okay, what's my next thought? What do I want to do? I want to get a zero up here, right? Make the value of row two, row one plus two. Row one plus row two. Row two. Perfect. So turn row two into row one plus row two. 
So what are you going to do the other two rows while you're doing that? Yeah, nothing. So first row is going to be 2, 1, 2, 10. Third row is going to be 3, 1, negative 1, 2. My matrix keeps getting skinnier. What's your middle <laughs> row? 0, negative 3, 0. Cool. And? Negative 6. Matrix is on a negative 6. Okay. Well, there's more zeros in this diet, so. Don't complain about my matrix. It's horrible. I'm sorry. All right, now. Okay, so second priority was this three, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So what do I do? This feels inconvenient, right? So what am I trying to do? I'm trying to get rid of a three using a two. You could fractions. So I could play fractions, or I could oh. make it six. I think make it six is probably a good idea. So I'm going to triple the top row and double the bottom row. Okay, so that's row one is going to turn into three row ones. And row three is going to turn into two row three. So middle row. Oh, what should I do with the middle row? Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Don't, don't get ahead of yourself. Right? Okay, let's leave it. Okay, so there's my middle row. My first row, if I multiply by three, what do I get? Six. Six. Three, six. Three, six. Thirty, and my last row I get six two negative two, six, two, negative two four. Okay, now switch the signs on one. Let's multiply by negative one. Okay, so maybe just off to this side, right? My off to the side, I mean right there. Okay. Flip the signs on one of the rows, and then what? Add them together. Add them together. One, one, and three, and have the product be row three. Okay, so I'm going to take row three, I'm going to turn it into row one plus row three. So in row one, I've got six, three, six, thirty. In row two, I've got zero, negative three, zero, negative six. And in row three, I've got... Zero, one, eight, twenty-six. Okay. Cool. Now. You shift over and try to make that one in the third row zero. Okay. So I want to get this guy to be a zero, right? That was my third priority. Mm -hmm. To do that, I have a negative three to work with, right? Okay, so let me multiply that row by 3. So I've got 6, 3, 6, augmented by 30, and 0, negative 3, it's getting smaller. <laughs> 0, negative 3, 0, negative 6. And that last row is going to be what? 0, 0, 3, 24. 24. Good. The numbers keep getting bigger. I probably would have been easier to just go one third. Yes! Good. So I could have multiplied the middle row by one third, but I committed to this. <laughs> Commitment is key. So. 84. At least they're not fractions. What? Didn't we multiply something ending with 6 by 3? Good talk. All right. So now what? I got rid of the original problem, so now we're under no obligation to get it right. What do I do with that? Zero. We have to make that three a zero still. 
Okay, so my goal is to add row one and row three together, right? So I've got in row, row two or, and row three. Thank you. Row two and row three. So row one, I've got six three six thirty. Row two, I've got zero negative three zero six. Negative six. And row three, I now have zero zero twenty four and. 72. Perfect. Okay. Now. Yeah, and now I should probably try to get some ones in there. Right? Because I'm, I'm really almost to where I want to be, right? I've got nice little triangle of zeros down here in the lower left. That makes me really happy. I got lucky and there's a zero over here. That's really nice. So this equation in the middle that's represented here, what does that say? Negative three y equals negative six. Perfect. What does that tell you about y? Tells you y is two, right? So I may as well write that. So that's zero one zero augmented by negative two. <coughs> you guys all see that? Can't you just plug in the Good. Perfect. Let me get the Z and then we'll do that. So along the bottom row here, I've got 0, 0, 3. If you divide by 24, you get 1 and 3. Okay. So divide the whole thing by 24, you get 1 and 3. And then that top row, right? I can pull a 3 out of that whole thing. I went and put a 3 in there a while back, right? So let me pull it out. That's 2, 1, 2 augmented by... So looking at this thing right now, I'm sitting at y is negative 2, z is 3, and what? Say that again? You don't know x yet. I don't know x yet, but what else do I know? 2x minus 2y plus no. 2x plus y plus 2z is 10. And then I know what y and z are. So I can know what x is, right? You guys see that? Or I can fiddle around with this thing some more. Where are we going to be required to fiddle around with it more for this class? No, I'm not super, I'm not super worried about this. So from here, you can back substitute if you want. So to back substitute, cram those in here, get 2x minus 2 plus, what's twice c? 6. 6 is 10, which tells you x is 3. 3? 3. Okay. What does this mean? So here's what I found out at the end. X is 3, Y is negative 2, Z is 3. What, is, what does that tell you? Something about lines. Something about lines. That point in 3D space is where they intersect. Good. That point in 3D space is where these... Oh, I erased them. What did I start with here? It's not like that when I put it on the shoulder. What did I start with though? This is an intersection that I found. Yeah, those are lines though, right? Planes. Yeah, those are planes. So I have three planes intersecting at one point. That's this point. You guys see that? Did anyone know anything about the equation for planes before we figure this out today? Okay, maybe it's already. But not really, right? Does it matter? Apparently not. Right? You can still find them where they intersect. Just pull it. You can use these problems to solve those very silly things about if you have seven coins in your pocket and they total a value of the dollar thirty-seven one of the coins. That's one of these like three-dimensional space problems. It's way cooler than you cool. think. So those are doable, right? 
Yes? Check. Cool.